Lindy and Chen used to have a three-day holiday around May 1st, Labor Day. Some of the forestry workers would come down and stay in Lindian Shan to join in this festival. Today, our culture is still here. When I hear the name Lin Tian Shan, memories of those days, really good days, come flooding back. We all got on so well together. Life for everyone there was good. Your work at Lin Tian Shan could be in the mountains or down below. As traveling to and from the logging fields was inherently risky, in terms of compensation, apart from your base salary, there were also various incentives. That's why jobs there were in such demand, and why girls loved marrying forestry workers there. At its peak, over 2,000 residents lived and worked in Lin Tian Shan logging district, delivering a stable supply of paper pulp to Taiwan's paper industry. As both a paper company logging operation and an idyllic community, Lin Tian Shan was a place its residents were invariably proud to call home. As long as logging continued, life would continue humming along. However, a sudden change in policy weighed in on the fate of Lin Tian Shan. Hey. The reach of that fire was incredible. It burned across sections 95, 96, 97, 98, 99, all the way to 100. It burned for a whole month and devastated the whole area. It was a huge loss. A wildfire that started in Lin Tian Shan on March 21, 1972, proceeded to incinerate a huge swath of the district, as well as parts of Dandao Logging District. The loss was devastating for Zhongxing paper. This, combined with cheaper paper pulp imports, rising logging costs, and increasingly tight profit margins, led TPPC on July 1, 1973, to cede its Lin Tian Shan operations to the Forestry Bureau, which shifted the focus to conservation and new business prospects. But what lay ahead for a logging operation that no longer cut its trees down? 